Hi and welcome back to another video today again RTX 4080 similar to the video from yesterday we're going to talk about the 4080 from Gigabyte and the 4090 from Gigabyte they're like almost identical they're only tiny bits where you can tell a difference which card is which apart from looking at the like the sticker of the card and we will just test them against each other see how it behaves clockwise temperature noise level everything like that see if we can spot positive or negative aspects inspecting the front side of the cooler we can find no visual difference between the 4090 and the 4080 which again similar to the video from yesterday that's a great thing because we already know that the 4080 has much less power draw than the 4090 but maintaining the same kind of surface area, the same kind of cooler capability we should see some very good temperatures and also very good noise levels from this card. First look comparing the backside of 4090 and 4080, at least the backplate itself looks identical but if we switch over to the fins of the cooler it's quite interesting because the 4080 has higher fin density than the 4090, which consumes more power, which has to dissipate more power. I also measured the distance between a single fin. It's about 1.2 millimeter on here and about 1.45 millimeter on here. And then I counted, yes, I actually counted the fins, at least in this distance. We have about 74 fins in this distance and we have about 61 in this distance. So it's more than 10 fins in addition. So that's quite a lot of additional surface area. Interesting because we have theoretically less cooling capability due to the smaller vapor chamber on the 4080. But then we have a lot more surface area. That could be or could lead to some quite interesting results. I started testing the card and first of all I wanted to compare the coil wine with the 4080 Strix. But I cannot hear anything because, like, for whatever reason, this card is extremely loud. The fans are running at 1800 RPM, like 1820 RPM. Power consumption is roughly the same as what we had with the Strix. It's also running Remnant from the Ashes in the background. It's running 600 RPMs higher than the Strix. That's insane. Like, why, why is it doing that? And now my plan was to use the built-in display that is in the Auros Master to compare the power consumption readout value directly with via view. Just because this way you could make a quite nice comparison with like the software readout and just the pure hardware readout on the 12 volt high power cable. But the thing is, you know, the good old Gigabyte control center. And while we had exactly the same problem already with the RTX 4090 Auros Master, and back then they told me the software is just not quite ready yet, I don't get it. I can click on the board, it shows the C790 Auros Master, I can change everything, no problem. If I click on the card, nothing happens. Like, I don't know, what is this? And to be honest, at this point, I'm not sure what to say anymore, because the 4090 has been out for quite a while now, and back then, when this card was launched and we had exactly the same problems, Gigabyte told me that the software might not be quite ready yet, and I accepted this because it was kind of like rushed with the Auros Master. I was also the only guy, I think, to get the card. And then I can understand it. But it has been out for quite a while. And I also downloaded the latest control center again from the 4090 page. That's also the version which we just tested. I tested it again with the 4090. It still does not work. And it's one of the main features you are purchasing when you buy a card like this. Because otherwise you could just get like a Founders Edition, which has less of these toys built around but if you pay for these features they should work if they don't work exactly on the first day that's fine maybe on the third or, or fifth it should work but after this time i don't really understand why it still does not work and that's also one of the reasons why we are currently working on our big rgb survey where you can participate because looking into all these kind of videos which we're doing a lot of feedback which we are getting from you guys is that software often does not work and it's not only about Gigabyte, the same goes for ASUS, the same goes for MSI, they're all shit. All of these softwares, they just suck. And in December, we want to find out, we will do a big video about these softwares. We want to figure out which is the worst of the worst. Yeah. Now looking at all the other data, like clocks and temperatures and whatever, GPU clock first, 
2850 megahertz that is 30 megahertz less than the strix that could be due to the individual gpu though like 30 megahertz is not going to make any kind of difference it's also like you won't notice this and it's so close together that this could be the individual gpu i would probably say that's pretty much the same the gpu temperature is slightly higher we had typically about 58 to 59 degrees celsius so that's like one degree more it's also not going to make a huge difference however it's 600 rpm more and as you can see just double check board power draw is also about 290 watt we also had 290 watt on the strix so it's not like this cooler has to dissipate more heat it's just a lot worse for whatever reason it's like 600 rpm more fan speed and you can definitely hear that jumping into the direct noise comparison and we can see that the Aros master with 47 decibel will be almost twice as loud as the rtx 4080 strix which has about 39 decibel this was recorded in 40 centimeters distance during gaming load after a warm-up phase of 30 minutes and because we already inspected the clock rates in gpuc and saw that there is almost no difference that's also explaining the benchmark results, which we can see. For example, in Battlefield, both cards are basically performing identical with 105 and 106 FPS. That is definitely within measurement tolerance. Under load, just talking about the power consumption, we can see 271 versus 277 watt. This could be explained with the individual GPU difference or also the different voltage regulator configuration. I also saw exactly the same behavior in Remnant for the Ashes, so exactly the same kind of FPS and also power draw and that's why I decided not to perform additional benchmarks just for the direct comparison of both because they will just behave exactly the same. I was definitely surprised, not in a positive way though, with the cooling performance or the noise level, especially considering the additional surface area. That's why we will just open up the card and see if there's anything special we can see inside. As you can see, the cooler is removed, but I cannot see anything unusual. Starting off with the paste application, as you can see, this looks fine. This looks pretty much what I would expect. The pads they used are this kind of type that are not really soft, not very elastic. They're a bit brittle as well, as you can see, so they tear apart quite easily. Technically, these kind of pads should be replaced after you use them once, because you get a quite deep imprint. From the components like the caps like the vrms and you only get this imprint once so if you reuse them you will lose a bit of like thermal performance but it's not much like honestly it just won't matter you maybe go from like 60 to like 62 degrees celsius on your power stages it's probably not going to make a huge difference if you want to go for the best thermals you would have to replace these pads afterwards but yeah, you just cannot spot anything that would explain bad thermals. I mean, the thermals are good. It's just that it needs very, very high RPM, but it could just be the case because, yeah, they have dense fins, which means it will require a lot of pressure to push air through. And maybe they just needed more surface area to make up for a smaller vapor chamber. That could be an explanation, but that's just a wild guess. There's one more thing I want to try though and that's using the silent BIOS because it's using a dual BIOS and maybe switching this to silent will tame the card a bit so it's maybe not running at 1800 rpm anymore. That's one more thing I want to try even though we already repasted it but should be fine I think. One more thing I want to mention is that this card same as the 4090 master has this kind of halo effect that just turned off because the fans now went into semi-passive mode. That's something you probably, you hate or like, it's very subjective. There's definitely an improvement with the quiet profile performance wise. You can see the clocks are the same. It's just two degrees warmer on the GPU temperature, maybe like three on the hotspot, but we have about 350 RPM less and you can definitely hear that. Checking the noise level, this translates into 43.7 dBA and you can definitely hear the difference. And honestly, I don't even understand why the OC BIOS exists because it's the same performance, but this is a lot quieter. I now did a small adjustment to the fan curve, a manual fan curve, which from my opinion should be the real silent BIOS. It's not a BIOS, but like a manual fan curve. The fans are now running at 67% under full gaming load, 
which translates in about 66 degrees Celsius, so that's only a very slight increase. But it's a much lower RPM, and if we switch back into the noise level, you can see it's on exactly the same level as the Strix. So the card, theoretically, is capable of having good noise levels. And now a great thing, and especially compared to the 4080 Strix, and I think we'll just add some 4080 Strix footage right in here. Now doing the same thing again with the Auros Master. As you can hear, or maybe not hear, almost no coin while at all. That's in a great and totally acceptable level. It's much better than the Strix. And to me personally, like standing half a meter away from the cart, I cannot hear any coin whine. So that's great. In yesterday's video, I was talking about the RTX 4080 Strix and I said that I would definitely not buy the cart simply because the coil whine was just too much. And to be fully honest, I would almost give the same conclusion to this cart. The only reason why I would not give exactly the same, like I would not buy the card, is the fact that the issues I see on this card, mainly the software, is something that Gigabyte can work on. They can update it. They can rework the software to make it finally work, which I hope they do. I gave them enough trouble in the previous days that I'm quite sure that they are working on it. So that's something, yeah, you can be fair and say that, yeah, they can still fix it. On the other hand, there are some aspects about cooler and BIOS I still don't really understand. First of all, the cooler. The Strix cooler performs much better because about 600 RPM lower fan speed, it has two or three degree less temperature. And that's a huge difference, like two or three degrees while maintaining a much lower fan speed. That's a huge difference. I'm not quite sure if it was a good idea to have this like very dense fin stack while the cooler has such a huge height, which requires a high fan speed to push the air through the cooler. So that's something I'm not quite sure about. I was not able to fit the 4090 cooler on the 4080, unfortunately, because it's a different layout. They use different caps. Otherwise, I would have loved to test this. But yeah, the cooler is definitely something that's not so nice. It's nice because it can dissipate a lot of heat, but at a very high noise level. The noise level is a result of the BIOS configuration and also the fan curve configuration, which is also quite odd. Because honestly, what I would have as the silent profile on here, the silent BIOS, I would personally would like to see it as the OC BIOS because it's the same clock speed, but it's using like 350 RPM lower fan speed. And it has like 1.5 degree higher temperature, which is something you won't notice, but you will definitely hear the difference. And if the clock speed is the same, how can it be OC and like silent? Doesn't really make much sense. And instead of the silent BIOS, they should do something with maybe 10% reduced power target. So lower amount of heat they have to dissipate, which allows much lower fan speed. Maybe like 1100 RPM would be pretty nice. That's something I would like to see for the future because I don't think that they will change this. It's probably already in production, BIOS is done, so I don't think we will see any kind of these changes, but that's something I would like to see in the future from Gigabyte. That's my conclusion. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye-bye.